longest serving African president who have who are still in power as of 2024. Several African presidents who have held on to power for extended period, often through constitutional amendment, electoral multiplication, and suppression of opposition leaders. This phenomenon has been defining future of African politics, with some leaders maintaining their position for decades. Here are the longest serving African presidents who, who are still in power. Number one. Tiodo Obiangwama Mbasoga, Equatorial Guinea. Yes, in power, 45 years. Tiodo Obiang has been president of Equatorial Guinea since August 3rd, 1979. His stature began after a coup d'etat that hosted his uncle, Francisco Messias Nguama. Obiang's rule is characterized by a tight grip on power with significant control over the country's political and economic system. Obiang has maintained his presidency through combination of maneuvering constitutional changes and alleged electoral fraud. Despite the country's significant oil wealth, much of the population lives in poverty and the regime has, criticized, has been criticized for human rights abuses. The lack of press freedom and corruption. Nevertheless, Obiang continues to exert cons considerable influence both domestically within within the region. Number two, Paul Bia, Cameroon, yes in power 42. Paul Bia has been president of Cameroon since November 6, 1982, initially ascending to power following the resignation of his predecessor, Amadou Hadi Jobi. The Bia has since solidified his role through combination of political repression, constitutional changes that remove term limits. Bia presidency has been marked by economic challenges, including high level of corruption and ongoing conflicts in the Anglophone, Anglophone regions. Despite these issues, Bia has maintained a firm grip on power through his party, the Cameroon People Democratic Movement, CPDM, and the leveraging the state security apparatus to quell this tent. Number three. Yoweri Museveni, Uganda, yes, in power, 38. Yoweri Museveni became the president of Uganda on January 29, 1986, after leading a successful guerrilla war to overthrow the government of Milton Obote. Initially seen as a reformist, Museveni has since retrenched himself in power, amending the constitution to remove the term limits and the age limit that would have prevented him from running again. Museveni tenure has been both economic. Museveni tenure has seen both economic growth and political repression. With Uganda, Uganda has made a stride in infrastructure development, healthcare, and other parts. Museveni administration has been marred by accusation of human rights violation, electoral fraud, and suppression of political opponent. Despite this criticism, Museveni remained the dominant figure in Uganda politics. Number four, we have King Swati III, Swati. Yes, in power 38. King Swati III has ruled Swati since 1986, April, following the death of his father, King Sobusa II. As African last absolute monarch, Swati holds significant power over the country, political, economic, and economic system. His rule has been marked by efforts to modernize the nation while maintaining traditional Swati culture. Swati III has faced criticism for his slavish lifestyle amid widespread poverty and high unemployment rate in S1. Political parties are banned and dissent is often met with as repression. Despite these challenges, the king maintained a grip on the nation, leveraging his cultural authority, control or and control over the state apparatus. Number five, Swati Ngueso, Republican of Congo. Yes, in power, Tatiye Denis Suez Nguesa has been president of the Republic of Congo since 1979, serving until 1992. After the lo losing the power, he returned to the presidency in 1997 following a civil war. Nguesa has since remained in power through the series of controversial elections and constitutional changes that extended his term. Nguoso presidency has been characterized by accusation of corruption, nepotism, and human rights abuses. Despite these issues, 
He has maintained a control through a combination of military support, political alliances, and manipulation of electoral processes. The Republic of Congo vast oil resources have been a keen factor in its ability to sustain its rule. Number six, Isis Afwek in Eritrea. He has in power 31. The, he has been president of Eritrea since the country gained its president from Ethiopia on May 24, 1993. Afwek led the Eritrean people front to victory after a prolonged war of independence and since established a highly centralized and authoritative, authoritative rule. Afriki government is notorious for its lack of political freedom, absence of constitution, and severe human rights abuses, including indefinite military conscription, suppression of press. Despite international condemnation, Afriki remains a family in power, controlling all aspects of written life through pervasive security apparatus. Number seven, we have Ismail Omar Gwela, Djibouti. He has in power 25. Ismail Omar Gwela has been the president of Djibouti since 1999, succeeded his uncle, Hassan Wul Abdipto, born on 27, 1979, in Dead Ethiopia. Gwela grew up in Djibouti and became involved in political at an early age. He worked closely with his uncle and held several key positions before ascending to power. Under Gwela leadership, Djibouti has maintained a strategic position in the Horn of Africa, leveling its location to become a significant hub for international military bases and shipping. The country hosts military bases from United States, France, Japan, China, which has bolstered its economic through foreign investment and rent. Gwela has won multiple times in office with the election of 10 critics by the international observer for lacking transparency and fairness. Despite this, his administration has undertaken significant infrastructure projects including development of ports, railways aimed at transforming Djibouti into a commercial and logistics center for East Africa. Gwela Tencha has been without controversy, has not been without controversy. Sorry. Critics point to the human rights abuses restriction on press freedom and political repression. Nonetheless, his leadership has brought economic growth and stability to Djibouti, a bit with growing challenges in government and social development. Number eight, we have Paul Kagame of Rwanda. He is in power. 24. Paul Kagame became the president of Rwanda on April 22, 2000, after serving the as the de facto leader following the 1994 genocide, Kagame is credited with transforming Rwanda into a stable and economically growing nation with significant, with significant improvement in healthcare, education, and infrastructure. However, Kagame's rule has been criticized for his authoritarian nature, including restriction on political opposition and press freedom the, and, you, uh, and the human rights. Abuses. Constitutional amendment in 2015 allowed Kagame to potentially remain in power until 2034. His leadership style, though effective in development, raises concerns about the long term prospects of democracy in Rwanda. Number nine, we have Furo Gnasi of Togo. Yes, in power 19. Furo Gnasi became president of Togo on May. 4, 2005, following the death of his father, Inasie Yadema, who had ruled the country for 38 years. For initially race to power was spent with his significant opposition and violence, but he, he has since consolidated his position through constitutional amendment, electoral processes. This rule has seen economic reform aimed at improving business climate and infrastructure development. However, his presidency has also been marked by accusation of human rights abuses, suppression of opposition, and limited political freedom. Despite these issues, he continued to hold power allegedly due to his con control over the military and security forces. Number 10, we have Alassane Horatara of Ivory Coast. He has in power 13 since May 6, 2011. Watara became president of Ivory Coast on 6, 2011, following the 
contentious election in 2010 that plunged the country into violent civil conflict. The le election pitted Oratara against the incumbent president, Laurent Gbagbo, who refused to cede power despite international recognition of Oratara victory. This led to a brief but intense civil war, resulting in a significant loss of life displacement before Babo was eventually arrested at office. During Oratara tenure, Ivory Coast has experienced notable economic growth driven by reforms aimed at improving the business environment and attracting foreign investment. The country has seen substantial infrastructure development, including the construction of road bridges, public facilities, which have contributed to the economic resurgence. Olatara has focused on national reconciliation, attempting to heal the deep political and ethnic division exacerbated by the conflict. Initiatives such as establishment of dialogue, truth, and reconciliation commission were introduced for foster to foster unity and address past grievances. Despite this effort, political tension remained high. Critics argue that Olatara administration has been marked by political repression with opposition leaders facing harassment and legal challenges. The political landscape in Ivory Coast continue to be fought with, fraught with challenges reflecting the complexity of nav navigating post-conflict governance and development. Number 10, we have Abdel Fatal al assis Egypt, yes, in power. 10. Yes, in power. He has been in power since uh, June 8, 2014. El Asisi, a former military general, came to power following the hosting of President Mohamed Morsi in 2013. His change has been marked by a focus on security and stability, economic reform, and major infrastructure projects. El Asisi presidency has been heavily criticized for its authoritarian nature. The government has cracked down on political dissenting restricted press freedom and conducted a mass arrest of activist, activists and opposition figures. Constitutional amendments in 2019 extended this time limit, allowing it to potentially, potentially remain in power until 2030. Number 11, we have Asal Usumani from Comoros. Yes, in power 8, Asal Asmoroni has been president of Comoros on multiple occasions with his current tension beginning in May 26, 2016, he, become, he first became to power through a coup in 1999 and later won election in 2002. Also, remain has been effort to establish political situation in Comoros, a nation often plagued by coup and political unrest. His president has been marked by controversy, particularly following 2018, the final that extended his presidential term limit allowing him to potentially stay in power until 2029. 20, his administration has faced criticism for his handling of political descendants and lack of genuine democratic process. Conclusion, the phenomenon of long-serving long presidency in Africa highlighted the complexity and challenges of governance on, on the continent. While some leaders have brought stability and development through their country, of others have maintained power through repressive measures and among the democratic democratic institution and human rights this extended presidency often reflect a broader struggle between the desire for stability and development and the need for democratic governance and accountability the future of this nation will depend on will depend significantly on how they, they navigate this delicate balance and address the underlying issue that have allowed such a long-term rule to persist. As the world watches, the, action, the actions of these leaders will continue to shape the political, economic, and social landscape.